Good afternoon. This is Bruce Adams from Aftermarket Business World Magazine. And I'm here today with Kathleen Schmatz, President and CEO of AAIA, and Rich White, Senior Vice President of AAIA. They've kindly decided to uh, combine business to talk to us about the rebranding of AAIA into the Auto Care Association. Thanks very much for uh, joining us today here in Cleveland. We appreciate your time. Start us off, if you will, by uh, telling us just why has uh, AAIA decided to rebrand itself and change the name to the Auto Care Association. Well, it came from uh, the uh, came from our, our right to repair battle. As um, as we were meeting with regulators and legislators in Capitol Hill, uh, those meetings, uh, if you've done them, they're 15 to 20 minutes. They're they're precious minutes to try to tell your story as as um, uh, evocatively as you can. And we found that we were spending most of those precious minutes explaining what the aftermarket was. And um, so we knew that that. That was a problem that we were going to have to deal with. And in some cases, uh, people may not, not only just not understand it, but there may even be negative connotations sometimes attached to that. You're absolutely right. In, in, uh, in our industry, aftermarket products are, are as good as or better than their, their OE um, parts. But uh, in, some, in some industries, the aftermarket is not the best quality. And, um, and uh, sometimes consumers feel that they're inferior products or uh, second best products. And uh, so the aftermarket is, uh, you know, we were doing a lot of flag waving for the industry and instead of talking about the right to choose where your vehicle is repaired. So, uh, you know, we've been in, I've been in the industry for more than um, 30 years. More than 40, if I thought about it. But um, and you know, and this is a, a point of discussion that I can remember from my very first years in the business. And a lot of people talked about it, but nobody tried anything. And and we decided, let's try, let's see what happens. So we hired um, the best agency we could find on rebranding, and they began the research. And that's really what it uh, the, it underlined our desire to make this change when we did focus groups with um, all of the stakeholders inside the aftermarket and outside. So can you talk a little bit about some of the strategies or elements of the plan that are going to take you from AAIA to the Auto Care Association? Yes, well, <clears throat> you kind of look at this rebranding process as having two parts. One part is we're changing our name and our brand and our logo. Uh, but we're also redefining how we talk about our industry, what we call our industry. And we're trying to move away from and replace the term aftermarket, which is it's, uh, confusing. It doesn't resonate. It, uh, as Kathleen said, it, it can be very negative at times. Um, and what we're trying to do is talk about mostly audiences outside the industry, just to clarify. Everybody in our industry knows what we're talking about external audiences, and that is you know, policymakers, legislators, uh, regulators at the Capitol Hill and the state uh, offices, consumers, educators, guidance counselors, financial analysts. Those people are external stakeholders for our industry. And we learned at the same time while we were fighting the right to repair battle that difficult for us to define who we were. And, you know, if you don't define yourself, somebody else is very happy to do so, and they would. But at the same time, we were embarked on a strategic plan for the association, and one of the goals, one of the key goals, kind of a stretch goal, sometimes we refer to it, is, with, is to increase the awareness and understanding of the value and the contributions of our industry for um, the more republic as it pertains to safety, economy, uh, environment, uh, just the, the overall contribution we make to jobs, 4 million jobs. So we're having a difficult time portraying how darn good this industry is and how important it is. Because and we said it's the name. We think it's the name, but we said, well, it's one thing for us to intuitively think that we know we're, we 
through. And so we embarked on a formal process to find out if that was true. It involved a ton of research, and uh, you know, sure enough, we, the, the name was an obstacle. And uh, we, had to, we had to change that. And we changed it in our name because that's like the industry we represent. And we're changing the way we, we talk about our industry. We have a new story. We have a new way of referring to it. Maybe I can use the analogy that really kind of <laughs> sends it home for people is looking at the healthcare industry. That is manufacturers, distributors, warehouses, retailers, reps, salespeople, marketers, doctors, professional nurses, facilities, drivers, engineers, inventors, that is the healthcare industry. They don't call themselves the Medical Building and Professional Development Association. It's the healthcare industry. Because it doesn't matter what role you play, any person or any business in that industry, it's all about taking care of people's health. And that's what we're doing, whether you're a manufacturer, distributor, a retailer, a service provider, a rep, an educator, a trade media person. What you're really doing, the bottom line is you're, you're helping care for people's automobiles. That's what we're all about. So we are moving to more consumer facing end result, the value of our associate, part of our industry. And that, that's kind of where we got to. And based on very valid research, here we are. There's uh, so many uh, constituencies involved uh, with the industry. You have your internal audience, you have uh, external legislative. Um, can you talk a little bit about how this is going to be rolled out um, to different audiences, over what time periods, and, and you know what vehicles you will use to uh, be getting your message across? Sure. The um, uh, the official uh, beginning of the new name and our new identity and and our our uh, uh, passion to help the industry define itself in a, in, a, in a bigger way is April 24th. So we pull the trigger on April 24th. Uh, that is um, the association's spring leadership days. Uh, so we'll have a, a group of folks there who can, who can celebrate. Um, but it's, we've been working on this for over a year now. And um, it took that long to to do all the research, to do all the, the field testing of the name and what it conjures up, and um, and to you know prepare for for this, and so we, we took the first year, um, which was phase one of our plan, uh, to do the research. Now we're doing the internal rollout, if you will, um, to our industry stakeholders, and um, we'll be we'll be celebrating this probably. Forever, <laughs> because we're excited about it. But the industry will have to, you know, who will be with us. But we know, um, so that'll be uh, throughout this year, throughout 2014. In 2015, we will have a new Congress. Uh, we will um, then begin the phase where we roll it out to the legislators and the regulators and the policymakers. So 2015 will be the year of the DC rollout, if you will, and also grassroots back in back in the districts, um, and we'll be we'll be really on a on a literal bandwagon to uh, to promote the industry at large to these folks, and um, and then in 16 we will begin the rollout um, to the consumer facing part of the plan, and um, you know, and that probably will go on forever. Is the uh, strategy for addressing the consumer elements in place yet, or is that to be developed? It's being developed, but it, be car care aware is is the stage that all of the activity will take place on. And then throughout the uh, rollout and the various stages, how do you you know measure your success, or how do you know you're going in the right direction as you as you roll it out to different constituencies? I think there's a number of metrics. Um, mm -hmm. One would be to watch the adoption of, beyond people using our logo, the adoption of the new language, the new story, the auto care industry, independence drivers, and this you know, new language, dialogue, and 
story that goes along with that that we're sharing with everyone and hopefully mm -hmm. adopt that. That's one is adoption rate. and see if people are starting to talk about it. They already are. I mean, we haven't even launched it yet, but we've, we're seeing articles and we're seeing groups changing things with the mission statements. Uh, articles that are referring to the auto care industry instead of the aftermarket. So it's already taking place. It's, it's very impressive. Uh, another would be, oh, well, we'll see how the, the, the trade press yeah. adopts this new language. Uh, what do our members say? The publicity. I think a big metric will be our, um, our ability to simplify our message when we are talking to the legislators and regulators. It's a big, big piece of this. Um, are they finding that their meetings are more productive because they don't have to spend the first few minutes explaining who the hell we are? Um, I think we're faced with a with a, a job situation because of demographics. All the 10,000 people turning 65 every day. You know, we're going to need more talented people to join our industry, not just as technicians, which we always think about. That's the shortage. It's everybody. It's marketers. It's salespeople. Executives, it's engineers, it's the truck drivers, it's the lift truck drivers, it's the parts pickers, it's the warehouse. We're going to need a lot of people, just like every other industry does. So we're hoping that you know we'll be able to retain and recruit more and watch those numbers um, by virtue of the fact that we're going to simplify explaining who we are, what a great industry this is to work in, uh, and now we've got a little better story to tell. It might make a difference. Our members go out and talk to civic groups and we talk to guidance counselors in schools and compete for these same kids with the same skills as every other industry. As uh, Kathleen says quite often, there's at any given time, we while we have about four million people employed in our industry, at any given time there's about three hundred thousand jobs that are open at, at all levels of our every industry. Day. And that's you know, <laughs> that's gonna be hard to fill as we compete. Uh, with other industries more. So the timing's good. You know, I think we're, we're going to have a better story to tell. That's, that's a metric, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We can see a difference in recruiting and retention and how that trend is going. And then can you talk a, a little bit about um, some of the help you got to, to, to get where you are today in terms of uh, launching this initiative, planning it? And, you know, it's not just something that you wake up one day and decide to do. Uh, as a, as a industry on your own, um, in terms of the uh, you know the uh, consultants, the research, whatever all that went into it. Well, tons went into it, but it it wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have the um, the enthusiasm and the acceptance of our executive committee and our board of directors. Um, they were they were very supportive of the concept. And um, and you know as as rebranding goes, sometimes that's not the case. So we were we were delighted that they they wanted to give this the same kind of world that we did. Um, we we looked at a lot of different agencies and we selected GMMB in in Washington. They are a top notch agency. They do rebranding for big companies like Visa. And four associations in Washington, and um, they are uniquely qualified. Um, they worked with um, a, a outside research firm for the focus groups and um, and some of the primary research. They um, you know, they worked with other consulting experts for for um, some of the positioning statements and and um, and photography and. I mean, all kinds of specialists had a hand in this, the copywriters, and, um, and, and we had them all doing it. It is, um, but it's a, pretty, it's a pretty vast project. It's, um, it takes up a lot of energy and a lot of time. We were, we're delighted to do it. And there were, there's like 80, we have a list, there's a spreadsheet in our office, and there's a list of over 80 different activities, things that need to be designed. Created from scratch, from you know, you think about email addresses, all that station, but there are so many other things that have to change. Every year, change your name. Um, 
There's some yeah. logo <laughs> if uh, they want to change the name to But it's uh, it's pretty incredible. I mean, associate the trade association. Very few go through this. Very few decide to do this. Very few identify. They think they need to do this, but if you do go down this, you gotta be darn sure that it's vetted, that it's based on data, that it's based on facts, no not speculation, <laughs> not a committee sitting around. I mean, I, I think we're very proud that you did it the right way, you did the right steps for branding, and that's because we are professionals. And again, we have to say that we have support to do it right. You have to go after the best, and that's really what it takes. And I think we have seen the results now, so it's, it's validated. It's very exciting times. Great. Well, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, once again, this is Bruce Adams with Half Market Business World Magazine, Kathleen Schmatz, and Rich White with AAIA, now known as the Auto Care Association. Thanks very much. Thank you. Pleasure.